Welcome design students. In this video we're going to continue our toy project by creating the holes inside the um, pegboard of our hammer and peg toy. So the first thing I think I'd like to do is create a layer that contains all of these pegs. So I'm going to select them by left clicking and drawing a marquee selection and touching them, I'm trying not to touch that end piece. Then I'm going to come over here to the channel box and click this button right here that will create a new layer. And then I'm going to toggle the visibility of them for a second. Now I know that I had my pegs right here. I can turn this layer back on and see that I had mine right here. So this is where we're going to create our hole. So select the pegboard and switch to vertex and then we're going to grab these vertices right here where the holes were lined up. You need to draw a marquee selection around each vertex and then hold down shift and select every other one. If you need to turn on the peg layer to make sure and verify that those are the right vertices you can do that. And hold down shift and click and drag a marquee selection around each vertex where a peg was. And then we need to look at the bottom of this pegboard and you can see now why we drew the marquee selection because we wanted to select the bottom vertices as well. Now that we have these vertices selected we can shift right click to bring up the modeling menu and we will chamfer these vertices. And the amount we're going to chamfer them depends on how big the peg is. So we need to turn the peg layer back on and then adjust the width until it's about the right size that it encompasses the peg, like that. And then we'll turn that peg layer back off and click the select tool to accept what we did. We now have our holes mapped out. Now what we need to do is cut some more edges so we can make this a round hole. We need to do this on both sides and it's going to take a while. So we're going to use the multi-cut tool and the multi-cut tool can be found in the poly modeling shelf right here. It can also be found in your modeling tools right here. Once you have that selected, zoom in a little bit and then you're going to hold down shift and that will put a vertex right in the middle of that edge like that and then you're going to click the corner vertex and push enter to accept that and then we have to do it again each time we push enter otherwise what will happen is we will continue cutting edges like I just did right here so each time you cut this edge, you have to push Enter, and then Shift, click, Enter, and then scoot over and do the next one. Enter each time. Shift to put one in the middle, click the corner vertex, push Enter. Shift to put one in the middle, corner vertex, Enter. Shift, click on the corner vertex, enter. And just keep doing that for each of these holes that we created on the front and the back.
Once you get those done, then you need to flip over to the other side and do the same thing. If the grid is in your way, then you can turn it off right here in your viewport settings. And I'm not going to make you watch me do that. So I'll be back when it's done and we'll continue on. So I've now cut all my holes on the bottom. I'm going to switch to my select tool to turn off the multi-cut tool. And I'm going to look at the top, look at the bottom to make sure that I did it correctly. I'm going to turn the grid back on because I had turned it off so I can know which side is up. And now we need to delete these new polygons that we've created that are inside the hole. So let's switch to face mode and select each one of these polygons that we mapped out and push delete on your keyboard. And then do the same thing on the back side. And now we have some holes. So now we need to bridge these edges so we don't have a hole anymore. As you can see, I've already done one here. So the way we do that is we're going to double click on the top edge, hold down shift, double click on the bottom edge. So we've selected this whole ring around the hole. And then we're going to shift, right click, and select bridge. And we just need to do each one of those. Shift, right click, bridge. Now, if that happens to you, what that means is that you accidentally selected fill hole, which is what I did. And I missed one right here. There we go. So now they're all bridged. And now what we need to do is make these holes round. Right now they're diamond shaped. So to do that, I'm going to switch to my top view and zoom in. And this right here is a camera for another viewport, but it's not, it's not selectable, so it's not going to cause a problem. And then I'm going to switch to vertex mode and select the vertices that surround the hole that are, that are not the corner ones. I'm going to get the scale tool and I'm going to scale them out like so to round it out. And I'm going to do the same thing with each one. And as you can see, I missed one there. Whoops. And it's important that you draw a marquee selection and hold down shift while you're doing so so that we select the ones on the top and the bottom. Something went wrong here. Not sure what. So now we have some relatively round holes. So the next step here would be to return to the channel box and unhide the peg layer. And I'm going to um, freeze the peg layer by clicking on this uh, column on the right hand side and selecting uh, T and that freezes them. You can see they're grayed out now, so we can't move them. And then we're going to zoom in some. And we're going to grab all the vertices. Oops. We're going to grab all the vertices that are around here. And um, scale them in a little bit. And then we're going to grab these and scale them in a little bit. And what we're trying to do is, um, and we can move them as well if we need to, what we're trying to do is make this conform 
to the peg as much as possible. And we need to do that with all of them. We can use the scale tool and the move tool. to um, move them in so that they closely match the diameter of the hole, of the peg, I mean. We'll just do the same for each one of these. So I'm going to switch back to the perspective view. And you may be saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, that doesn't really look very round. And it really won't look round until we turn on smoothing. And when we turn on smoothing, they'll round off. To illustrate what I'm talking about, if we switch to object mode and hit 2 on the keyboard, you'll quickly see that these round off to really nice holes. Now the whole thing looks very pillow-like, but that's because we don't have any control loops or chamfering on these edges or beveling, which we will have in the next video. And I'll see you then.